both Bill and Hillary Clinton are sounding the alarms and they're letting people know that democracy in the United States is indeed in danger because, as we've all noticed, fascism is on the rise and these fascists do not believe in democracy. So in an appearance on The Late Late Show with the insufferable James Corden, Bill Clinton stated that there's a fair chance the U.S. could lose its democratic system within the near future. And in an interview with Financial Times published on June 17th, Hillary Clinton also stated the same thing and claims we're on the precipice of losing democracy, but she does have a strategy that could thwart democracy from dying by stopping fascists from coming to power in the first place. And the way that she believes we can stop fascists is by conceding to fascists and letting them have a dub. Because that's how you retain power, apparently, according to her, is by adopting some of the things that the fascists want. So this portion of the interview that she had with Financial Times is what I really want to focus on in this video, because these two paragraphs in particular that I'm about to read to you went viral, and for good reason. Quote, my espresso has arrived. Clinton asks for more iced tea. I cannot allow the lunch to end without questioning the direction of her party. I say that Democrats seem to be going out of their way to lose elections by elevating activist causes, notably the transgender debate, which are relevant only to a small minority. What sense does it make to depict J.K. Rowling as a fascist. To my surprise, Clinton shares the premise of my question. Quote, we are standing on the precipice of losing our democracy and everything that everybody else cares about then goes out the window, she says. Look, the most important thing is to win the next election. The alternative is so frightening that whatever does not help you win should not be a priority. So, first of all, I don't necessarily know that I've seen anyone call J.K. Rowling a fascist because she's not a fascist, a transphobe, yes, but a fascist, I don't think I've seen anyone make that claim, so I don't necessarily know where that's coming from if they're referencing a particular thing, but essentially her argument is that we should make a utilitarian calculation sacrifice a small minority in order to benefit the greater good because if we give in to fascists and the democratic party doesn't defend trans people well then perhaps that won't make them as unpopular and then they could win this next election and stop fascists from taking power the problem is that this isn't going to end well and the reason why i think it's logical to deduce that this strategy of giving into fascists isn't going to end well because historically giving into fascists has not ended well. Now, I shouldn't have to explain this to Hillary Clinton, who was the former Secretary of State, but this is why defending a small minority from fascists is very important. In the 1930s, Germany's Jews, some 500,000 people, made up less than 1% at 0.8% of the German population. Most considered themselves loyal patriots linked to the German way of life by language and culture. Nazi anti-Jewish policy functioned on two primary levels, legal measures to expel the Jews from society and strip them of their rights and property while simultaneously engaging in campaigns of incitement, abuse, terror, and violence of varying proportions. There was one goal, to make the Jews leave Germany. On March 9th of 1933, several weeks after Hitler assumed power, organized attacks on Jews broke out across Germany. Two weeks later, the Dachau concentration camp situated near Munich opened. Dachau became a place of internment for communists, socialists, German liberals, and anyone considered an enemy of the the Reich. It became a model for the network of concentration camps that would be established later by the Nazis. Within a few months, democracy was obliterated in Germany and the country became a centralized single-party police state. In September of 1935, the Nuremberg Laws were passed, stripping the Jews of their citizenship and forbidding intermarriage between Jews and non-Jews. Jews were banned from universities, Jewish actors were dismissed from theaters, Jewish authors' works were rejected by publishers, and Jewish journalists were hard-pressed to find newspapers that would publish publish their writings. Now, obviously, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison. You know, this isn't exactly what's happening to trans people in America, but we have to look back and learn from history and acknowledge that the Nazis used hatred of Jewish people to galvanize folks, galvanize people against them. And it didn't start with concentration camps. It started with legal and social persecution. So if you were to give in and allow fascists 
to have a victory, to not stand up for marginalized mar minorities. You're not stopping fascism, Hillary Clinton. You are emboldening fascists. Now, what are Republicans doing with regard to trans rights? Well, in Texas, they're investigating parents who seek out gender affirming care for trans children. In Florida, Ron DeSantis is copying Hungary's dictator, Victor Orban, and forcing queer teachers back into the closet. And anti-trans propagandist Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire already publicly advocated for the criminalization of transitions for adults. So the Republican Party is using hate against trans people as a political tool because this very small minority doesn't have a lot of visibility. So there's ignorance there, which is being weaponized currently because there's ignorance, because there's a lack of understanding. The GOP is trying to use hating on them in order to get power, to throw red meat to their base, in order to galvanize people. And again, it's not identical to what Nazis did in Germany to Jewish people. But there are enough similarities that we should be able to learn from. And the problem here is that Hillary Clinton is unable to put aside her own prejudice against trans people because, like J.K. Rowling, she is a turf. She does not believe that trans women are women. She's a bad person. And so what Hillary Clinton is recommending is to become more reactionary as a society to stop the reactionaries from taking power. In what world does it make sense to let the fascists win on a certain issue in order to stop them from winning excuse me no this is cowardly in order to actually defeat fascists you push back against them you stop them from weaponizing hatred against marginalized people but hillary clinton doesn't understand that and part of it is she's just trying to look for an out because she bears a lot of culpability for the state of this country right she ran against donald trump in 2016 and she lost because she had no agenda she wasn't running on trying to expand healthcare in this country or expand education to people. It was just Trump's bad. Well, that's not going to work. The neoliberalism that your husband championed in the 1990s also put us in this situation where, I mean, people are desperate. People are going hungry. People in the United States are struggling to pay the bills. And when people are that desperate, they become more susceptible to radicalization and they start acknowledging that, okay, since I'm poor, it must be the immigrants or the trans people that are responsible for this and not the economic policies here. Now, that's not to say that if we got rid of neoliberalism and had socialism, that anti-trans hate and racism and bigotry would diminish all of a sudden, but people are more likely going to believe these fascistic arguments, believe that trans people and women should become second-class citizens if they don't have any, anything else to hang on to. But Hillary Clinton literally is saying here, give in to fascists to stop the fascists. No, if we actually listen to Hillary Clinton's strategy, this so-called utilitarian calculation that she wants us to make, the fascists will get more powerful, which is why nobody should listen to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton should go away and hide her fucking face because what she's saying is bigoted and what she's saying is exactly what the fascists that she's warning you about want to hear. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.